What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to our channel. It's the Choose here from Choose to Explore, where I teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So we're in Aruba for six days, and we're gonna be trying a bunch of food, from local cuisine to Americanized to Italian to a bunch of different kinds of food. So we wanted to take you guys along for like a little food tour of every place that we're eating and where you guys should be eating when you get here. So stay tuned, guys. You don't want to miss it. Right, so first up, we're at Kraft, and on Tuesdays it's Taco Tuesdays, and tacos are only one. Dollar, one dollar per taco. Um, these are for their chicken tacos as well as their carnitas. Also, they have happy hours between five and nine o'clock every day, and all of their drinks, their specialty drinks, are half off as well. First up, we're gonna try the chicken tacos. Let's see, let's see. Nice big bite there. Great flavor. He said it's great flavor. What else? Um, it has a little kick to it, which I like. Kick. And like a barbecue flavor. This is really good. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Alright, now we're going to try the carnitas. And this one right here is the papaya sauce. Nice kick on this one. He's got some spicy papaya sauce right there. He's just pouring it right on. <laughs> He likes the spice. This is a hit. It's hidden? <laughs> a hit. Come get five of these. <laughs> Carnitas with the papaya. <laughs> Eight and a half, nine out of ten. Hey, you heard it here. This one is a green salsa verde, which is the mildest. This is the papaya one, which has a nice kick to it. I really like the flavor of this one. And this is a smoky barbecue. That one's my favorite. Ah, uh, this is my favorite. This one is good. This one was a little too spicy for me. Great flavor on this one. Okay, so we got a lot of recommendations to try out this speakeasy called Apple Tech. And if you're not sure what a speakeasy is, it's really just a bar that's disguised as something else. So really this is a bar that's disguised as an apothecary, which is a pharmacy. So Apple Tech is pharmacy in Dutch. So Actually, Olivia is a pharmacist. Okay. So she's very excited to go try this out. So let's head to Apple Tech. So in order to enter, you come here and you ring the bell right here and they will let you in. And this place is super cool themed bar. It's really supposed to be like a hidden bar, but they have fantastic vibes and drinks. I personally don't drink, but I got a meal and it's fantastic. I honestly, this is probably one of the best cocktails I've had. Um, what did you get, Liv? I got a Morse code. It's like rum, lime, strawberry. It's really good. And it's just really good vibes. They got really good music, lights, very good decor. And it's a place to really come, chill, and just enjoy the night and get really good drinks here. Also, they have a social hour between 6 and 8 where you can get drinks for around $8, which is a pretty good deal. So we're just getting out of Apple Tech, and that was my first time at a speakeasy experience. You could tell that these are world-class bartenders. So they have so many good cocktails, or as they call them, prescriptions. They actually have a wall on the side that say prescriptions, or find your prescription. And there they have different um, kind of craft cocktails and painkillers, which are shots. So if you guys want to go in there and have a great time, I highly, highly recommend. Next stop Apple on our Tech. food tour is the Pistachi House. So if you guys don't know, a Pistachi is local to the ABC Islands and that includes Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. So this right here is supposed to be one of the best places for the Pistachi. This is a local family owned shop. So come with me, let's try it out. We actually got five different Pistachis and we're really excited to try them. We got a Spanikopita, we got chicken, beef, cheese and you got one more lip. I got the cheese too. Okay. Yeah. And so let's try these out. So the first one we're trying is the quiche, which is a cheese. Now to me, these are similar to like the empanadas, like fried. I, this actually might be baked. Yeah, I think this is baked. Um, the cheese inside, it's like really airy, which is different. So it's not as like crispy or crunchy as like an empanada or something like that. But I really like this. 
It's really good and it's not heavy. So in the morning, it's something good, nice to see. So the next possession I'm trying is actually the Spanakopita, which is a fusion between the Greek Spanakopita and of course the Dutch Pisashi. Um So it's really good. It's probably my favorite one I've tried so far. Next ones I just tried are the chicken and the beef. Now, both of them are very flavorful. It's more like ground meat, um, but I really like how these are really flavored well. And most importantly, you don't get a mess when you're eating these because they're not as flaky as uh, a lot of the other fried dough um, pastries that I'm used to eating. So, love these. So our next stop is Linda's Dutch Pancakes, which is right behind us, right there. And this was actually a local recommendation for one of the best places to get Dutch pancakes on the island. So we're here at 10 o'clock? Yes, 10 o'clock, so it's actually not the best time to come because it's very busy. So if you come between 8 and 9, it's okay, not too busy. Between 9 and 11 a.m., it's extremely busy. That's, that's the time that we chose for some reason. And if you come at 12 to 2, they're pretty much um, not as busy. So that might be a better time to come if you want to have a more leisurely breakfast. But so let's check it, check it out. We just came, um, it looks so good. I got the bacon and cheese uh, Dutch pancake. Mine is more on the savory side. So when I spoke with the waiter, what they said were the savory ones will fill you up. But if you're looking for something lighter, you should probably go with something sweeter. All right, so my Dutch pancake has uh, pineapple, coconut, and coconut rum, and it's really delicious. It also has some powdered sugar on it, so it sort of reminds me of funnel cake. It's definitely a lot lighter, but so delicious. I really enjoy it. Now these are very light, similar to like a crepe I'd say, but um, lighter actually, but tons of flavor. Definitely try this out. Our next on our food tour is the Old Canuco House. So let's check it out. And if you want to try traditional Aruban food, here is where we were recommended to eat. As you can hear, there is live music that is playing, there's beautiful outdoor seating, nice decor, so check it out. Um, I am Jamaican and I saw that they had an oxtail stew. So it's an Aruban style oxtail stew versus my Jamaican oxtail stew. So I hope it lives up to it, but this is very hard for them to live up to, so we'll see. All right, so we're just now leaving Old Kanuku House, and it was pretty good, traditional Reuben food. So I had the coconut shrimp, and they were not playing with the coconut. I think that's probably one of my favorite dishes, but here they put a lot, a lot, a lot of coconut on it, so it's a lot sweeter than I was used to, but still good. Now, like I said, this is a very hard act to follow for trying to have an oxtail in a Reuben style, but it honestly was really similar to the Jamaican one. But the thing that I like, in New York, the oxtail is like $36 for a small oxtail. Over here, the oxtail was a lot cheaper and they didn't play with the gravy. It was great gravy as well. It was very good. It's not the Jamaican one, but this is a close second here. So <laughs> if you guys want to try traditional Reuben food, come here. You know what's better than beachfront? Literally being in the water. <laughs> So we're here at Flying Fish Bone and when we walked in, they asked us sand or water. So I'm just looking ahead at like the beautiful lit up blue water. I'm like, water, of course. But what they meant was you're gonna be taking off your sandals and walking through the water and your table is in the water like we're in the ocean right now. <laughs> like actually, Olivia, I was talking to Olivia before I came here and I had these pants that are actually shorts that turn into pants. I said, should I put the shorts on or the pants? She said, put the pants on. It's a nice Nice place and now I wish I had my shorts on because now my pants are wet <laughs> but let's see what this place is like it's definitely a great ambiance the blue water the ocean I'm just curious to see what it kind of looks like at um, during the day definitely a great place for a sunset all right and our food came I got the catch of the day I didn't know what fish it was but I got it because it's just the cheapest thing on the menu and live got the grilled shrimp that's really good about here is I was worried that my feet would be really sandy but they have a foot wash station here so before I leave, let's do that. Last night we ate at the Flying Fish Bone, which was an amazing experience to me. I really enjoyed it there. Um, I loved having my feet in the water. I thought that was really cool. I didn't expect it, so I that was a great little touch to the restaurant. Um, but the food was delicious, okay? I had some grilled shrimp, and it was cooked exactly how I love it. And they had the melted butter. It was just everything to me. <laughs> um, I had the uh, catch of the day, which was red snapper, and I'm not gonna lie, 
it was fantastic. Um, I highly recommend this place because it's really good flavors. It's a really good ambiance. But bring your wallet because it is expensive. <laughs> like the menu varies between like $35 and $50. Actually, some things were more like the lobster was like close to $60. So, I mean, you're in Aruba. Um, what else do you want to expect? But it's a great ambiance, great food. And if you're here for food, go to Flying Fish Bowl. A lot of people were there for special occasions. I was there ce celebrating my birthday. Some people were getting engaged there. Yeah. So, you know, great special ambience. occasion, great place to go. So next on our food tour is another spot that is a well-recommended local Dutch pancake spot, which is Diana's Pancake Place. So let's check it out, y'all. They've got the Picasso, which is the fresh fruit pancake with powdered sugar. With powdered sugar. And I got the bacon and pineapple Dutch pancake. So, one thing that's different about this one and the last one is they actually explain the syrups to us. The toppings are uh, the syrups, the regular one, the Dutch one. Uh, the Dutch one is made out of sugar beet salts on a natural basis. Regular powdered sugar and cinnamon powdered sugar. Enjoy! Sounds good. The Dutch syrup is actually made out of sugar bits. He said sugar bits? So, I think this one has a really different taste. I wouldn't say it's good or bad, but it's a different taste. The Dutch ones, I feel, is like really sweet to me. I like it a lot. But, these pancakes are really good though. I really like this one. To be real with you guys, I can't really tell the difference between them. <laughs> This, Linda's, or um, Diana's. So you can go to either one, based on my preference. I'm not a master of pancakes, but they're both good. So we're just now leaving Diana's Pancake, and I really like them a lot. Another fruity one, just like I got at Linda's. And both of them, they had very friendly servers, but again, we went at a very busy time at Linda's. Um, we came to Diana's at around 9 a.m. on a Saturday, and they were very attentive, very friendly, and it was a little bit less busy. Also, it's not even that they were as busy, there's a lot less tables. So because there's less tables, if it is a busier time, you might be waiting for a longer period of time versus um, Linda's, which has a lot more tables. So the servers are running around a lot more. So just something to consider when you decide where you wanna eat. Yes, so we had a good time at both of them. They're both delicious Dutch pancakes. Um, it's your choice. Pick a good time to go to each of them. 